All right, so here's my first look at this. Um, I will say right off the bat, I do not like this latch here that they got going on here. That's like the cheapest thing I've probably ever seen. I'm probably gonna replace those just because they look really bad. Um, other than that, it actually looks like a decent little unit. It's very compact, it's very heavy. I moved this thing around by, by hand a minute ago and it's pretty heavy. Um, we got three more boxes here, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna open all this stuff up, get it all laid out, so that way I can see what's going on. And I believe we're gonna install it right here on the frame. Hopefully I can um, either re reuse bolt holes for the brackets, I'm not sure what kind of brackets it has, or I might have to cut, sometimes the um, there's like brackets that go behind the frame, so I might have to cut some holes in the deck plate. We're gonna find out though. All right, so first glance, it looks like there's a lot here, but it's really not that big of a deal. Um, this is gonna be all of our water lines. Those we're gonna have to run all the way to the front of the truck and hook them up somewhere up front. I'm gonna video all this, so hopefully you guys, if you're following along, you're gonna know how to install a green APU unit. And this is quite the unit. I'm actually pretty impressed with all I came with. So I'm gonna just go ahead and look over this stuff a little bit i'm going to unroll some things see how much hose and cord i have to work with um it's got this cute little muffler but i'm probably going to straight pipe it let's get all mounted and see how it looks All right, so we have the deck plate off and you're supposed to use these like little blocks and they go like this over your frame and they attach to these brackets right here. And these are supposed to bolt on right like that facing outwards. But what I think I'm gonna do that's gonna make it cleaner is I'm gonna bolt them on the opposite sides to where they flip in. And then drill another hole about right there and mount them solid to the frame. So I'll mount one bracket here and I'll have to drill two more holes right here and mount the other bracket there so I don't have to have these bolts over top of my frame making it look ugly. Plus I'd have to cut our deck plate. And one day we wanna do like a flush mount deck plate in here. So this would make it look bad. So I believe that's what I'm gonna do if I can make it work. <laughs> Yeah, let's 
put it back. I do not recommend that. This next step is optional, but highly recommended. I gotta stop looking at the actual screen because I look like an idiot. I have to look at the lens, please. Please just look at the lens, Josh. Like I said, it's not totally necessary, but it makes the job a lot more enjoyable. So now that it's up in the air, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna run our heater lines. They um, hook up uh, somewhere up there. I believe this is, that's the in, it says right there. And up there must be the out somewhere. Anyways, we're gonna run our heater hoses and our um, battery cable lines all the way up through and hook them up. It makes it a lot easier while it's up in the air like this. And our fuel line, and whatever else we need to run to hook up. And then we'll also run all of our hookups up into the floor. We're probably gonna cut a hole somewhere about right there and run a bunch of wires and hoses and whatnot else up into the floor. Plus two drain spots, I believe, for the um, unit as it condensates to drip out. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. I guess right now. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get the um, draw tube put in here for the fuel pump so that way we can get this thing started here eventually. Um, if you have a fuel tank that every single little um, bung hole is used up, this is what I'm doing. It's probably wrong, but this is what I've done before in the past and it works great. I guess I should say it works great as long as you don't have like a sending unit for your own fuel in this hole right here. We're gonna drill a hole in that. Big enough for this bulkhead to fit in. We're gonna tighten that down. And then we should be able to put our draw tube right into that. I'm just kidding guys, I'm just kidding. But for reals. All right, I might need two hands for this. That's what she said. Now, I guess I should show you guys that I did put an O-ring on my bulkhead, but this is just a normal brass bulkhead. So we're just gonna stick that right there. I'm just gonna put a little bit of Loctite on this, not to help seal it up or anything, but it probably will help with that. I don't know, I really don't know. It's mainly so that this nut never comes loose and like um, everything comes undone. You know what I'm saying? Like, da 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 da. That song by Corn. You know what I'm saying? I'll just keep my mouth shut now. All right, that looked like it sealed up nice.
Aleluya. So we'll just stick this down through here. Right like that. So this is kind of a fancy little um, fitting they got going on here. The last couple APUs I put on didn't have a style fitting. So what this does is obviously this one here with the long tube would be your draw tube. And then this little nipple here would be the return. And that fitting, it goes in there and it returns down through the same fitting. Like that's actually pretty genius. I don't know, these, these are probably super common and somebody's probably like, wow, it doesn't take much to impress you, but I'm impressed by that. Anyways, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna set this inside the tank. Let me move this up here a little bit somewhere. Right there, boom. We're gonna set this section here on top of the tank, tighten it down, and then we're gonna stick our draw tube down as far as we can. If we feel we hit the bottom, we're gonna lift it up maybe about an inch, because you don't want it all the way on the bottom. So we'll pull it up a little bit, and then we'll tighten down that fitting right there, and that's gonna crimp it. There's a ferrule in there that's gonna crimp down, and it should be good to go then. Um, yeah, we'll slap it in there and see what happens. All right, so this is where I'm at. I didn't get as much done today as I would have liked to, but I got busy working on other people's trucks, and I'm working a little bit slow today because, like, it's it's really it's really hot, really hot. Here's what this looks like. I did not like zip tie the fuel lines in place yet, but I think it turned out really nice. Um, hopefully, it doesn't leak too much. The next thing we're going to be doing tomorrow morning is we're going to be running the water lines. Now, normally you put a T in somewhere right in there is what I normally see, but I think I'm going to run them up here and take one of those plugs out and put a T in right there. So that way I can just um, run it all the way up here and not have these T's everywhere. Woo, I probably got you guys dizzy right there because otherwise you got to use a bunch of these T's and um, like the style shut off, but I'll just use this type of shut off then. So I'll just like put a T in right back here maybe, or up here, wherever it's gonna work best, and I'll just run another one of those shut offs. I believe I have some more over in the other shop. Um, I'm gonna find out tomorrow. We're gonna deal with that tomorrow. Tomorrow. Because why do today what you can put off and do tomorrow? It's already 8.30 guys. I'm ready to go home. Did I never turn the air on today? How weird. I figured I'd also right away show you that I was messing around in the bunk here a little bit, trying to figure out the placement for the entire unit. I think I'm gonna put it in here sideways. Normally, they're the other way, but that's in like a 70 inch bunk. Um, I, I don't know, I, I, I'm not sure yet. I think I'm gonna do it this way though. And then I'm gonna run my duct work. Boy, you guys probably can't see any of this. I'm gonna put a vent right here and I'm gonna run the other one into the duct work to go up through. I took the sub box out that's in here, the factory sub box, and I already took the factory duct work out so I can um, pour it all together. Oh my gosh, it's hot in here. There's no air movement, guys. <sighs> Day two of trying to figure out this green APU. So far today, I have my interior stuff pretty much done. Pretty much everything's hooked up other than the water lines. Now, there's no directions that come with this. I went to their website, I cannot find directions on there. I have yet to call them. Um, I spent about an hour on YouTube trying to find people that have hooked these up before to make sure I run these water lines the correct way. I'm really starting to feel like I don't know what I'm doing here because there is three nipples, two outs and one in, two outs and one in, but I have four hoses. So they want me to loop one, which I feel like it would be the one that's coming back out of the bunk, loop it into the return back to the engine. I, I'm, I, I don't even know. Like I've said, I've watched like five videos just, I think it was just trucking. 
actually had a by far better um, how to install video so far than the actual green APU video because they actually have one on YouTube on how to install it but um, it didn't say anything about the water lines either that or I wasn't paying attention but I, I watched it twice so it's probably a good thing that I'm doing a how to install here all right so that way so you guys will know how to install this off of my own mistakes and trial and error but we're gonna get this thing hooked up I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hook up my water lines and then we're gonna do a rundown of what I've gotten done so far and how I'm running everything and then we're also gonna do a rundown on if it works or if you should just not do what I'm doing um, let's get right back into it I guess I don't know So this next move would be considered a master mechanic move. We're going to be pulling out a plug and putting in a new fitting without draining the water or blocking it off in any shape, form, or way. Well, I will be kind of blocking it off. I will kind of be blocking it off as I thread this um, fitting on. I have a little rubber nipple cover thingy on the end. So we're going to go ahead and thread this, take the plug out and as fast as we can thread this in. This should hold the pressure back. It fits somewhat tight, but it's probably going to leak the entire time. So I'm going to have to move very swiftly. So that was the last water line that I have to hook up. Um, uh, then we got to hook the battery cables up. I left those unhooked because I didn't want any power to it for it to somehow kick on. I don't think it would, but you know, I didn't know, so I just left it unhooked. So we're going to go and hook those up next. almost did the first test start without the muffler on because I may or may not have forgotten to put it on. The only thing I'm concerned about is there's like a bottom pan that goes on here. And I'm not sure whether I was supposed to put it on before or after the muffler. We'll just stick the muffler on and see what happens. Couldn't have gave me any more room. <sighs> this will be a spot where I see in my analytics that y'all are skipping because I'm showing me working without talking. Except for a couple of you guys, you'll be like, oh, thank God. Finally a moment where there isn't cheesy YouTube appropriate music playing. 
And we can't hear Josh talking about nonsense. No nonsense today, guys. I need to get this thing fired up this morning quickly. It was supposed to be running yesterday, but I ended up getting busy on um, our other driver's trucks. So, you know how that goes. Now that those are torqued to spec, I think we'll put that cover on the bottom here before I put these brackets on to hold up the end of this because I have a feeling I should do that first. Let me go get that flat piece of metal. I'm back. Um. So it comes with a bunch of little bolts. Great. So it'll go like that. Also go like. I don't know what they want me to do here. We're going to cut forward to where I ha actually have this figured out. We did it. Okay, so basically we're done, guys. I have everything hooked up. I went through everything. I double-checked it all. There's probably problems that I'm going to find down the road. But as of right now, everything works other than the AC because I got to pull it over to the other shop because that's where the AC machine is, all that technical stuff, and I don't feel like carrying it back over here. So we're just going to drive over there to charge the AC. I'm going to do a couple videos showing you guys the mother of all messes, which would be in the bunk. There are so many hoses and wires that I had to run into this cab. Bunk. Whew, I'm tired. It's a mess. Let's just let's let's take a look at it, guys. Oh, let's see if I can do this first try. There we go.
So I went ahead and drilled a four inch hole right into the factory ductwork and I poured it one of the tubes going into it so that way you have a vent up at your face up there blowing on you. Otherwise you would have to have just, here's the other one that I added. You just have like two of these down at the bottom and you don't get any fresh air blowing over you when you're parked or whatever. I mean, you could always just set like a fan up there, I guess, but who wants to do that when you got a nice little vent right here? So what I did here for the control panel is I took out the cigarette lighter. There's a cigarette lighter right there, but there's also one right here. And our drivers really don't use those. They'll, they'll hook up to like a, um inverter or something so their phones can charge on a normal charging cord. Nobody really uses those in our fleet that I know of. So I didn't have to drill any holes in this panel. I used that hole over and this is just 3M double side taped on. So that way if we ever remove the system we don't have a bunch of big old gaping holes all over our panel. So let's go through the functions of this. You got your climate, battery charger because this is a maintainer or whatever, and diagnostics. I mean what more can I tell you about that? We'll go ahead and start it. The thing is actually super quiet. I'm actually really happy with it. The passenger door is open, so we hear it a little bit more than normal right now, but I think it sounds really nice and smooth and quiet. Some of them are really loud and have a rappy sound to them. Well, I guess that's that. Um, I gotta run it over and charge it with AC, Freon, and send it down the road, so. I'm not saying this is the end of this video. There, We might discover more problems when I go and charge it, so just stick around for another two and a half, three minutes. So we just got back from our first test drive. Um, there's several problems here. We had Matt Rich put a um, like 3,000 horse tune on this truck, and this turbo it's it's a factory 6NZ turbo, and it's starting to spew oil. And obviously, we cannot get the amount of boost out of it that we need for the fuel consumption that we have. So we're going to have to put a bigger turbo on, maybe a bigger manifold, plus we've got some new leaks. Let me show you. And before you guys say, ha ha Josh, <laughs> sucks to be you, you did it wrong. No, this is actually um, a leak there, right there. As you can see, it's spewing down here. So that's not from me, but I'm going to fix it. Uh, then the other one, <laughs> um, that's not con that is condensation, but it's also mixed with... Um, a little bit of red and it tastes like the forbidden kool-aid so i'm gonna have to fix that too which if it's coming out of the um condensation tube i think we all know what that means it's probably a bad heater core which i've never changed a heater core on a 389 peat so this video might be an hour long by the time this video is done i might have to section this up into two pieces I, oh man as i was walking in there the um, metallic in this paint job is insane, but I don't think I can get it in the video. Sadly, let me try and get it on this door here. Nope, okay, that was a fail.